Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to your Thursday uh, and welcome to um, your grade 12 first additional language class. Uh, so thank you for waking up <laughs> and tuning in uh, for yet another lesson. Uh, so today we will be focusing on the literary text, uh, specifically short stories. Okay. Uh, so this will be the focus for today. Okay, so we I'll be focusing on detailed uh, summary of a short story. So I'll be giving uh, that to you. And also we will see how elements support the message or the theme of the story um, and also how the story is told, including the role of the narrator, structural elements, uh, for example, your themes, characters, setting, conflict, tone, plot, exposition, you know, that whole uh, structure. Okay, so we'll be going over uh, that today. So we, hopefully we're ready and willing. All right, so, um, so you will find your short stories uh, um, in paper two. Um, in your exam, so it would be it will be section C, okay. Uh, so if you uh, choose section C, so you need to answer both questions. So you'll be given two questions, and you won't know exactly which short stories are included until the exam, okay. Um, and then two stories will be set, and uh, you would need to answer the questions set on both short stories, okay. So um, today we're just gonna go over, so you might have read the short story, you might not have, but this will be good practice um, when it comes to looking at, uh, so how, or the structures and um, so the different uh, components uh, of the short story. So yeah, okay. So basically just to give a, uh, or just to remind you, a short story is a work of short narrative prose that's usually centered around one single event, right? It's limited in, in scope and has an introduction. It's got a body and a conclusion. Uh, although a short story has much in common with a novel, okay, it's, it's written with much greater precision. So it is uh, uh, way shorter. And uh, you will often be asked to write a, a literary analysis on it. Uh, so what that is, um, uh, so basically you are required to have basic knowledge of literary elements, which we'll go over. Okay, so uh, the following guide and questions then will will help you, okay, as we will go over that. So um, yeah, so also just to remind you a contextual question. Um, uh, that's where you're given um, an extract. So that's about 20 lines from the short story. Uh, so you have to answer the questions based on uh, the extract. And then some answers you can find in the extract. Other questions will test your understanding of other parts of the short story. Uh, for example, it's plot, uh, the characters, symbols and themes as well. And uh, some questions ask uh, for your own opinion about the short story. Okay, so that's basically, uh, yeah, the gist of it. Now we're gonna look at what the examiners um, uh, look for in, um, yeah, so in your answers. So they will assess your answers to the contextual questions uh, based on, as we can see, understanding of the literal meaning, reorganizing information in the story, inference, evaluation and appreciation, okay? So basically your understanding of the literal meaning would mean that you need to identify information that's clearly given in the short story, okay? So they want to see uh, that ability to reorganize information in the short story. For example, you may be asked to summarize key points or state the similarities or differences between two characters. Remember, uh, comparing and contrasting. Um, also your ability to provide information but that may not be clearly uh, uh, stated. So that is um, inference. 
Uh, so using what you already know about the short story. So uh, this may include explaining how a figure of speech affects your understanding of the story, uh, explaining themes or comparing the actions of different characters, okay? And also when it comes to evaluation, um, so you will be um, checked on how you make uh, judgments about aspects of the short story and making your own opinions based on information that's given in the short story, okay? So for example, you may be asked if you agree with a statement or uh, to discuss uh, a character's motive for doing something, okay? And then lastly, uh, so you will be uh, tested on your ability to respond to characters in a short story and how it is written on an emotional level, okay? So that, as I've said, is called appreciation. Uh, for example, you may be asked how you think a certain character feels uh, or what you uh, would have done. So that's that would be open-ended, you know? uh, uh, what you would have done if you were in their situation. So you may be asked to discuss how the writer's style helps to describe what uh, a character is feeling, okay? So, uh, so we will just uh, break these sections down, okay, in this uh, particular short story we'll be analyzing today, okay? And then when it comes to questions, so the questions that you will be asked will be based on, um, on, on these sections. For example, a literal or literal questions will look uh, like this. For example, naming uh, the characters, uh, places and things. That's where you will write the specific names of the characters and the places, etc. And then um, so you would ask to state the facts, reasons, ideas. And there, that's where you write down the information uh, without any discussion or, or comments. Okay. And then you'd be asked to give reasons for why. Uh, that's where you write two reasons. Uh, so this, you know, so this means the same as state as well. So you will either be asked to give or state two reasons, okay? So that's the same thing. And uh, identify the character, reason, theme. So you write down the character's name, state the reasons um, as well. Where you're asked to describe the place, character, what happens. So there you write the main characteristics of something. For example, what is a place? Um, uh, so what does a place look like? Um, so feel or smell like? So you describe all that. Um, is a particular character kind? Are they rude? Are they aggressive? So, um, so that's uh, the type of information you'll be giving there in your answer. And then, the, and then the next one, what does character X, for example, do when? So that's where you write what happened and what the character did, okay? And then, uh, so why, so the reasons, why did character X do? So that's where you give the reasons for the char character's actions um, according to your knowledge of the plot, okay? And then who, so that would be writing the name of the character, okay? Who is or who did that? To whom? Uh, so does uh, this XX refer, uh, then that's where you will write the name of the relevant character or the person, okay? So that would be uh, based on the literal um, questions. So questions about information, okay? That's clearly given in the text or extract from the text, okay? Now, we move over to reorganization. So that would be uh, questions that need you to bring together different pieces of information in an organized way, okay? Uh, so if you're asked, for example, to summarize uh, the main points or ideas, that's where you write the main points without a lot of detail. So remember in the past lessons where you were uh, shown how you summarize your text. So you write the main points, okay? or you'd be asked to group common elements. So you join the same things together, okay? So that requires you to really be able to 
organize and reorganize information so that you can find or identify these common elements. And then uh, giving an outline uh, there, that's where you will write the main points without a lot of detail again, okay? So an outline. So you just uh, jot down your main points as well. So just uh, look at these, uh, uh, these uh, these words, okay, these keywords, okay, your outline, uh, giving a summary, grouping, okay, and then we move on to interference. So, uh, so it would be questions that need you to interpret, okay, so basically you make a meaning of the text using information that may not clearly be stated, so this process involves thinking about what happened in different parts of the text, okay? Looking for clues that tell you more about the character, uh, the, the character theme or symbol, and uh, using your own knowledge to help you understand the text, okay? A lot of critical thinking there will be necessary. Uh, so there, if you are asked, for example, to, as we can see there, explain how this idea links to the theme X. So what you do is you identify the links to the theme, okay? Um, the second one, comparing the attitudes, um, actions of character X with character Y. So what you need to do there would be to point out the similarities and the differences. Okay, and then uh, another question would be, what do words um, da 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 suggest, for example, reveal about? What does this situation tell you about? So that's where you need to state what you think the meaning is based on your understanding of the story, okay? Um, another question would be, how does character X react when da da da, or describe how something affected um, or state how you know what character X is, da, da, da. So there you will write down the character's reaction, okay? And then you will uh, also just uh, state what the character did or how they felt, okay? And then uh, next question, what did character X mean by the expression, da, da, da? So there, that's where you will explain why the character used those particular words, okay? Uh, right, and then, uh, so we can uh, also just uh, continue to evaluation, okay? So that's where um, you are required to make a judgment, okay, as we've said on your knowledge and understanding of what the text and your own experience um, is. So the questions um, uh, may be uh, discuss your view or character's feelings or character's theme. There, you consider all the information and then you reach a conclusion, okay, based on that information. Uh, or you would be asked, do you think that so there's no, it's, it's open-ended that one. There's no wrong or right. You answer to these questions, but you must give a reason for your opinion based on information given in the text, okay? Um, and then, uh, so if you asked, do you agree with, for example, in your opinion, what? So give your view. So that's all open-ended, okay? So, but obviously your opinion has to draw from um, the information in the text, okay? So you need to relate your opinion to, uh, um, to the information in the text, okay? Uh, just to show that, uh, yeah, so I have made, I know how to make those linkages, okay? And then lastly, uh, so appreciation. So questions, um, so it would be questions that ask you, about your emotional response to what happens, okay? Um, so the characters and how it is written as well. So the question would be, for example, how would you feel if you were character X? Again, they're open-ended, no right or wrong answer, okay? But you may give again, so you give a reason for your opinion, 
okay? And then discuss your response to, do you feel so sorry for? Or, um, yeah, so that's where you give your opinion, relating your opinion to the information um, in, the, uh, in the text, okay? And then, uh, so the last one would be discuss the use of the writer's style, diction and figurative uh, language. So there, uh, so you need to answer this type of question where you, and, and ask yourself, does the style help me feel um, or imagine what is happening? You know, what a character is feeling, why, or why not? And then you give a reason for your answer, okay? So, so that will be that. So just uh, make sure that you understand these, uh, yeah, these different types of questions and, um, and what type of response is required from you, okay? Righty, so we will be focusing today on uh, the short story titled Manhood. Okay, so that is a story by John Wayne, okay? And uh, so just to give uh, uh, just a bit of background on the title, okay? So the story uh, title Manhood basically points out uh, to the main theme of the story, uh, questioning what manhood and masculinity mean. Uh, different versions of masculinity are offered in the story, and uh, one of, um, or rather on the other hand, we have the father's version, which sees manhood in terms of physical strength and skill as well. Contrasted uh, with that is the version that the father was offered when he was young as well. Okay, so this involved a man working hard and getting qualifications so that he could have a secure job. The mother, however, doesn't mind that her husband is not manly and thinks that her son should not be pushed so hard physically as he's still only a boy, All right? So, um, yeah, so the, just a bit about the, uh, the author. So John Wayne was born in England in, in 1925 and became a university lecturer before he became a writer. So he wrote poetry, plays, short stories and novels. So he mainly wrote about ordinary people and their problems. And his criticism of society resulted in him being called one of the <laughs> angry young men of uh, 1950s and 1960s. So, so he died in 1994. So I don't know if any of you guys have uh, read the story. So if you have, you can just, uh, yeah, indicate if, if you have. Uh, but we are going to be focusing on uh, the story in particular. Okay. Uh, right. Okay, so we've got the summary there. So I don't know if any of you would like to read us the summary. I feel I've been talking too much. <laughs> Anyone would like to read us the summary? So if you can just indicate or raise your hand and then uh, I will give you the opportunity. So if you would like to read the summary, please do indicate, okay? So I'll give you a few moments to decide, okay? So we've got Hopulang, Hoopulang, we've got Jason, ah, we've got Lissidi. Okay, so Lissidi, go for it. Okay, you are on unmute, okay? So you can, uh, yeah, so you can go for it, Lissidi. Thank you, ma'am. Um, there are three characters in the story. Mr. Williamson, Mr. Williamson, Mr. Willison, <laughs> yeah. Mrs. Willison, and their 13 year old son, Rob. Mr. Willison is determined that Rob should become good at sports and develop his body because he never had that chance when he was young. Mrs. Willison doesn't agree with this plan. The story begins when the father and son are going for a bike ride and the father pushes his son to cycle further. Even though the boy is tired and wants to rest, he encourages the boy by saying, 
there is a surprise waiting for him at home. He has bought a boxing punch ball so that his son can practice boxing. The boy is exhausted when they return home. The mother is annoyed with the father as she feels that he is pushing the boy too hard. The father Rob wants the father wants Rob to train with the punch ball so that he can get strong enough to be selected for the rugby team at school. Rob tells him that the team has already been chosen and he has not been selected. The father's disappointment is relieved when Rob says that he has been selected to box for the school instead. But the mother is very angry that her husband wants the boy to box as she feels that it is a dangerous sport. The father, however, is very happy about it and looks forward to the boxing tournament with great excitement. He puts all his energy into training his son every day. On the day of the boxing tournament, Rob complains of stomach pains. His mother wants to get a doctor, but instead of calling the doctor, the father phones one of Rob's teachers and discovers that the school does not want, does not do boxing. The story ends with Mr. Willison realizing that Rob has lied about the boxing tournament. Excellent. Thank you very much, the city. Thank you. Yeah. So just a question I want to pose uh, to everyone. Yeah, as we continue. So we are going to look at the different um, elements now um, of the text. Okay. So um, looking at the story or just at the summary, um, can you tell me what uh, the themes are? So can anyone just tell me what you think the themes are there? Uh, looking at the, just a summary of the story. What do you think the themes are? So you guys can either type or you can just uh, raise your hand and share. What do you think the themes are there? Uh, anyone, so you can just share. There's one that is quite, uh, that is very clear, that is just shouting there, just shouting. So anyone who can uh, just, uh, yeah, just have a look lies. at this story. Yeah? I think it's lies, miss. So lies, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so just tell me, so based on, on, on what, uh, based on which uh, part do you think? The final paragraph, Miss Rob, mm. lying to his parents about mm. the boxing tournament. Mm, 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 mm. Exactly, exactly. Thank you for that. Yeah. So, anybody else? So, what else do you see there? What What other uh, theme do you think is shouting out there? All right. So you can just jot them down as we continue. Okay. Right. So. Uh, right. Okay, so we look at the elements of the story first. Okay. Uh, so we've got uh, the setting. Okay, so we've got the setting there. We've got the structure and development. Uh, so this is the usual, right? The characterization, style, setting. Uh, so we've already mentioned that there. The narrator's point of view. Um, diction and figurative language, tone and mood. The first one is supposed to be themes, in fact, which is what we are going to uh, go to first. Okay. So we just break it down. Okay. So there, just looking at the story that we've, uh, uh, the story that we've um, gone through there. So uh, structure and plot development. So the rising tension there uh, would be Mr. Wilson, um, you know, putting Rob under pressure. Uh, so Rob is passive and Mrs. Uh, Wilson or Willison resists. And the complication and conflict comes where the parents have conflicting ideas about what is best for Rob. 
and the contrast. So, um, so there's the big night there. Uh, so for Mrs. Uh, Willison, it's the night she gave birth to Rob. Uh, for Mr. Willison, it's the night of his son's boxing tournament. Um, and uh, so the climax of the story is the day of the boxing tournament when Rob complains of stomach pains. And uh, resolution, there's no resolution in this, in this particular story. So Rob's lie about the boxing tournament is unresolved, uh, unresolved and then the conflict between his parents um, is also unresolved. Uh, and then, um, so an anticlimax there would be Mr. Uh, Wilson putting down the telephone, um, who hesitates and then turns and uh, begins slowly to climb the stairs. Okay, so, uh, so that's basically your plot and development of this particular uh, short story. Okay. And then, so here are the themes of the uh, story. So we've got uh, father and son relationships. Uh, we've got uh, about, we've got identity development as well. Um, uh, because now, uh, so Rob wants to, so Rob is still trying to figure out his life. And then there's so many um, influences uh, that uh, want to define who he is. Uh, so there is a theme of parenting as well. Uh, we see the role of parenting, the different approaches of parenting uh, from the mom um, and the dad. And the uh, effect of low self-esteem as well, and that would be in Rob's part. And masculinity and society's expectations of men. Hmm? Uh, so um, as we can see, uh, Rob's uh, father uh, is hell bent on, you know, you've got to be macho as a man. Uh, whereas Rob's uh, mom doesn't see it that way. And she's quite happy with her husband. Uh, although the husband actually has an inferiority complex there. Uh, and then the power of the father in the family as well. Okay. And also lack of communication in the family. So people are just... Uh, doing their own thing and uh, thinking their own thing, there isn't that open and honest communication and also masculinity, okay? So just to define the two words, manhood and masculinity. So manhood would be the state of being an adult man rather than a boy, uh, whereas masculinity means having qualities traditionally associated with men. All right. And uh, so we've got uh, characterization uh, there. So, so there are three characters in the story there. Uh, Mr. Willison is the protagonist in the story. Uh, he is the center character and controls the action that takes place. Um, Mrs. Willison opposes his plans and actions so she is the antagonist in the story, while Rob is caught in the middle between his parents. So Mr. Willison wants the best for Rob, but his attitude causes Rob to resort to deceit. Uh, so as um, Les Sadie said there, so he lies um, in the end, even though he tries to please his father. Uh, so uh, Rob is passive and he's submissive. He doesn't stand up for himself. Um, but he knows he will get support from his mother against his father's plans. So it could be argued that he is too scared and weak. Mr. Willison is strong-willed and he's obsessed with training Rob. As we can see, he would even say he's got a surprise waiting for him, he's pushing him, um, even though he's exhausted there. So this one-sided view stops him from realizing that, uh, that Rob is not interested in sport. So if he was a more mature and sensitive father, he might have understood his son, his son better and not pushed and uh, manipulated him, as we see in the summary he does. Perhaps then he would not have allowed such a situation to develop in the first place. His attitude could, uh, you know, uh, could be said to have made the boy submissive and ultimately dishonest, you know, uh, because if you are unable to stand up for yourself, uh, so you will find ways to still, you know, protect yourself and also please the other person who is uh, pushing you. So perhaps um, 
then he could uh, have allowed such a situation or, um, or rather he wouldn't have allowed such a situation to develop. His attitude could be said to have made the boy submissive and, and ultimate, uh, ultimately dishonest, as we've said. So um, maybe Mr. Uh, uh, Willison has missed the point, I think he definitely has, which is that being a man involves good sense as well as physical strength. So um, he was one-sided and really looking, um, you know, looking um, at uh, manhood in a one-sided uh, type of view, okay? So uh, throughout the story, uh, Mrs. Willison is opposed to her father's uh, uh, behavior or rather her husband's behavior uh, towards the treatment of their son. So it could be argued that Mrs. Willison was being too protective of Rob and not allowing him to stand on his own. So that speaks to the parenting theme as well there. So maybe both weren't doing Rob justice there. So mom was overly protective, uh, dad was uh, um, uh, too pushy. So they weren't giving him space to really discover uh, who he really is and, um, and really appreciate himself as an individual. Okay, so those are, are our three characters there. And then looking at the style. So the, the main stylistic device there uh, that the writer uses to show us more about the characters is through their dialogue, uh, rather than through descriptions or the thoughts of the characters. So an example um, would be how the dialogue shows the tension between the characters in Mr. and Mrs. Robs, um, Mrs. Uh, Willison. Um, so they have a disagreement about what is best for Rob. So I'm just going to read it out. So she says, um, um, what nonsense, you are taller than I am and I'm. No son of mine is going to grow up with the same wretched physical heritage that I. Um, no, he'll just have heart disease through overtaxing his strength because you haven't got the common sense too. Um, okay, so that is just the, the argument that they are having about Rob, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Willison there. So just notice how they, you know, they don't allow each other to finish their sentences. So one is ready to reply, um, adding to the sense of tension and miscommunication there between them. Okay, so there's also use of uh, colloquial language there. So that would be like your common uh, language. Okay, so that will be our style. And uh, if, uh, so the narrator's point, uh, so that's the point of view there. So uh, apologies there. So we've missed the rest of the words. So the narrator's point of view there um, is um, omniscient. So just to remind you what that means, so the narrator is not one of the characters in the story. So um, the narrative is told using the third person. The narrator refers to the uh, characters as he, uh, um, she, or they. So this third person point of view helps the reader see the story from a wider perspective than from only one character's point of view. Okay, so that is, uh, so the, narrator's point of view. So the next uh, one will be diction and figurative language. Uh, so the words the writer uses and the way they are used also help to carry meaning in the story. For example, um, Mr. Willison's enthusiasm for training Rob is shown in the way he orders Rob around. So if you can see there, um, so he says, don't lie there. Uh, said his father, you'll catch, uh, you'll catch a cold. Uh, I'm all right, I'm warm. Come and sit on this. When you're overheated, that's just when you are prone to. I'm all right, dad, I want to lie here. My back aches. Your back needs strengthening. That's why it aches. It's a pity we don't live near a river where you could get some rowing. And later, he forces Rob to punch the punch ball. Take a punch at it, Mr. Willison urged. Let's go and eat. Uh, go on, one punch before you go in. 
I haven't seen you hit it yet. So you can just see the, the, the pushing there. Um, so Mr. Willison's relationship with Rob is based on the son being forced to do what his father wants him to do. Uh, so without being able to negotiate. So there's just no uh, negotiating there. He's pushing him and pushing him and pushing him. Uh, so by his use of words, the writer indicates that Rob is not completely happy. So as you can see, his replies there. Um, so he, 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 he just puts up with all the good intentions of his father. So he just does as he says. Um, and the writer describes the boy falling silent. So Rob lay like a sullen corpse, it says. Um, he looked horribly like the victim of an accident. So it, it, it's the, the story continues. A slender shadow. Rob never really tells his father honestly how he feels. And, he, and this leads to further deception later. So uh, basically his dad keeps pushing. Um, at the, 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 the more he does that, the more Rob, you know, he, the more Rob shrinks, I would say, the, the more his voice uh, really becomes uh, more and more silent. Okay, and then lastly, looking at the tone and mood. Throughout the story, the writer makes um, uh, the reader aware of how Mr. Willison tries to keep Rob's coaching on track by the tone of his upbeat and encouraging advice. Often from what um, he has uh, read, not what he himself has experienced. So as you can see there, so just uh, in the extract, so when fatigue sets in, the thing to do is to keep going until it wears off. Then you go, uh, your second wind and your sound and your endurance, he said. If you hit with your left hand and then catch it on the rebound with your right, it's excellent ring training. No boxer ever went into a big fight without spending an hour or two in bed resting. So there, you know, however ironically, his tone is not uplifting. It's really pushing rather than encouraging them. Uh, so he, re he, he creates a note of tension in the story. So as Rob does not respond uh, positively to his father's wishes, Rob is sullen, sulky, silent, and mostly not um, as keen on his father's plan as uh, the father would like. Okay, so I see. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I see. Let's see, they're saying, Mrs. Uh, Willison, so this is, uh, okay, he's, basing, he's basically exploiting his own son. Okay, that is Mr., right? Mr. Willison is basically exploiting his own son by giving him rig, uh, rigorous training and also hunting him, exactly. Draining him with insults um, in order for Rob to prove his masculinity towards his father. And do you expect to get a good response from, from, um, from Rob? Definitely not, definitely not. So thank you, uh, Lissady, for that. Um, yeah, so we got another one there. Um, yeah, okay, no, it was just that one. Thank you very much, Lucidi, for that uh, feedback. So he's a very pushy dad, this one. Um, yeah, so if you look at the mood there um, and, and just, uh, just with Rob's reaction, so Rob is no longer full um, of energy and enthusiasm, okay? And, um, and okay, so we see something there. Yeah, I'm unable to see the rest of the chats now. I'm not sure why, but we just, uh, yeah, we press for time now. We just press for time. So if I can just uh, conclude on this. Um, yeah, so if we look at, um, uh, so as the story continues now, um, so uh, for example, so there's an angry and worried tone um, uh, regarding, you know, when um, Mrs. Uh, with Mrs. Willison's words to the father. So we'll just um, hear what she says here. So she says, for example, Grace Willison put down. Okay, so that's the, the, the that's um, the father. So he says, Grace Willison put down the teapot, her lips compressed and looked from one to the other. 
Boxing, she repeated, boxing. Mr. Willison um, replied calmly, over my dead body, said Mrs. Willison. That's one sport I'm, def uh, I'm definite that he's never going in for. So there's an angry, you know, and, and worried tone there um, uh, of Mrs. Willison's word to the father. Um, so we can see at the end, uh, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but at the end um, of the story, there's a gloomy tone about with, uh, with the father. So, um, so the mood is basically, um, um, so it's basically how uh, one feels. Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they angry? Are they indifferent? You know, what are the reasons that uh, make one feel this way? So these are just uh, the things or, um, yeah, just uh, uh, things that you need to just think. Um, yeah, so just think about when it comes to the tone and the mood. Okay, so I'm just trying to see now if I can see the rest of the chat. I see you guys have written there. Um, yeah, okay. So just to... Just to summarize, so if we look at the title, we're not going to have time to do an exercise now, unfortunately, due the, to the time. So I'm just going to give a summary. Okay, so the, the, the uh, so the, so we were going through the, uh, the short story Manhood by John Wayne and the title. So it's, it's uh, Manhood. Uh, so that points the question or points to the question being asked, what is manhood? what is masculinity and the things that we saw there so that's basically the meaning of manhood and masculinity power of uh, uh, the father in the family and lack of communication um uh, we see the family just being distant really and they are not willing to listen really listen to each other um so if we see at how see how the story is to told so the setting that um, is on a country road in Britain, in fact, and um, and 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 it happens it happens in the family house, and then the structure and development. So with the rising tension there, we said Mr. Wilson puts Rob under pressure. Rob is passive. Uh, Mrs. Um, Wilson resists as well. So the complications and the conflict uh, we see parents having conflicting ideas about what is best for Rob, as we've said. And um, so the contrasts, uh, so as I've mentioned, there's the big night. So that big night, um, uh, Mrs. Willison um, sees, it, she's, sees it as, um, you know, the, the, the night that she gave birth to Rob. So that is, you know, the birthday in fact, but the father, he's not interested. He sees that as a night of his son's boxing tournament. So we can see the contrast there. And the climax would be the day of the boxing tournament when Rob complains of the stomach uh, pains. So the resolution, there's no resolution there. So Rob's lie about the boxing tournament is unresolved. And the conflict between his parents is also unresolved. And uh, so the anticlimax, we said that uh, Mr. Uh, Willison put down the telephone. He hesitated, then he turned and began slowly to climb the stairs. And if we look at the characterization, uh, the protagonist, we said so that was Mr. Uh, Willison. So that's Rob's father who controls the action of the story uh, with uh, Mrs. Willison being the antagonist. So that's Rob's mom. She opposes the action, so, okay? And we say Rob is caught in the middle. And looking at the style, uh, we say we have a dialogue there. And the narrator's point of view, it's a, a third person. And uh, so diction and, um, and uh, figurative language. So Rob, uh, he, he, he lay like a sullen corpse, it says, the story reads, and um, he looked horribly like a victim in an accident, he says. And um, yeah, so the tone and the mood, so it's, it's, it, it begins with the upbeat and encouraging, okay, but it really ends with a gloomy tone um, at the end. So that is pretty much, uh, yeah, uh, that sums up uh, this, uh, this story. 
Uh, so we will continue on this in the coming weeks, obviously with a different story, okay? Um, and time is always the enemy, but thank you very much for participating, guys. And uh, hopefully you have learned a thing or two. So um, let us meet back here, um, same time, same place, okay? And uh, so tomorrow we will be focusing on figurative speech, okay? So just, uh, or, or, or the, yeah, so just the different components of it in preparation for poetry, okay? So I look forward to seeing you guys um, or interacting with you guys again. So the usual tag us on the socials and uh, spread the word and we will meet back here tomorrow. So thank you and God bless. You are welcome guys. Take care. Ciao, ciao. Mm -hmm.